then when you went back and watched the film from Kentucky, I guess, what showed up when you were watching it that maybe you didn't see live during the game that, that you were impressed by? Well, um, number one, um, and I've watched it a couple times, and we're going to watch it one more time today with our team, a good part of it anyway. Um, there's way too many turnovers. Um, you know, when you look at the uh, things we've got to get better at, you can't beat good teams with 19 turnovers. It's just not going to happen. Um, and a lot of our turnovers were unforced. It wasn't like their defense was forcing us in those turnovers. It was us being in such a hurry and just getting sped up. And I think it's the first time playing in front of you know a great crowd like that, playing against Kentucky, you know, nationally renowned program. It, it, it just got us where well, we were too emotional too. You know, like we didn't react to some of the calls that were not necessarily you know our way in, in the right form. And you know. To throw the ball out the kid the way Eric did is just really embarrassing, as I mentioned after the game. It's that kind of, you know, losing your composure. Uh, you know, because the game became a three point game, and those three points really mattered. Every play matters. Uh, it's really proud of how our guys kept fighting and kept battling, and, and what a great job they did fighting to, to get us back in the game where we cut it to three. But, you know, that game's over now. Now it's time for us to move on to the next game, learn from our past, uh, and, and try to take from that uh, positives, learn from the negatives, get better, improve. I mean, the biggest thing now is to come back and have a great focus and energy to get ready to improve to, to play another road game against a team that's going to be a real hard team to match up with is how they play small ball and you know it's a very difficult game for us coming up in, in Knoxville. I know it's still a small sample size but what's made this team so successful on the road so far? Uh, we've only had two road games so it's not like it's a you're, you're, you're right it's a small sampling but uh, I actually like it you know some teams especially younger teams like well it's better we have less distraction we're all together it's just us as one I mean I've had teams that sometimes play better because uh, of those exact issues. Uh, and, you know, it's us against the world. There's no one there cheering for us in Knoxville. Um, so hopefully, uh, it, it, you know, it gets you really good focus. So, um, you know, I thought the last time we played well on the road, we really learned from very poorly uh, played game on our part against Alabama. And, you know, hopefully we'll learn from our mistakes in this last game. It was a great opportunity, and, and when you let it slip away, it hurts. Uh, but now you got to move on to the next opportunity, next game. I know a lot of coaches don't believe in moral victories or whatever, but coming out of a game like Tuesday night, you're such a young team against a perennial power. Do you, do you believe that's a moral victory for this Not team? at all. I don't believe yeah, You're correct. I do not believe in moral victories. <laughs> Uh, there are positives to take out of the game, for sure, for sure. But at the end of the day, you know, uh, we had a great opportunity to help ourselves and, uh, you know, didn't take advantage of it. And, and that part, you know, something that, that hopefully drives you and motivates you to do better uh, in, in, for your next opportunity. You talked about the positives. What were some of those that you saw that you could build upon from that game? Uh, you know, number one, just the never quit, never die, never give up attitude. That's always huge because, you know, when you have that, you all, we, and we did, we're down 18, and we're cutting at three with eight minutes to go. I mean, not like, uh, they were, you know, was cut at the three with 30 seconds, eight, eight minutes to go. We're right there, and, you know, we, we cut it to four and gave up a wide open three-point shot. We had to spend too much energy, I talked about after the game, but, you know, that's number one, it's just the attitude. Of we're never going to quit doing our best. Uh, and then I thought that, uh, you know, we, we, uh, we did a good job uh, competing, you know, and trying hard. Just got to channel it better and, and uh, get ourselves, uh, you know, more, with more poised and, and with more composure. We talked a lot early in the year, especially non conference schedule about uh, emphasizing defense and you guys have to learn. How have you seen that progress since SEC week started as far as on the defensive side? I think we're getting better and I think that's, you know, I mean, we've come a long way, you know, and you can 
consider uh, where we were against Norfolk State, where we are now, and we still have a long way to go. I mean, the one thing we did way too much of in our last game were, were fouls. I mean, way too many. I mean, 52 fouls, 28 on us. I mean, uh, it, that was, uh, you know, impactful on, this, on the game. Tennessee dismissed one of their best players, Mostella. How have they changed since he's been gone? Um, you know, I, I, I uh, am still studying them, but you know, he's a very good shooter. But, uh, you know, they, they didn't play well because well, I think it was the, just how it happened, you know, the day of their game against South Carolina, I think, at home. But then they go out and beat Vanderbilt to Vanderbilt. You know, they had Ole Miss down 13, and Ole Miss made a great comeback the other night to win that game. Uh, at Ole Miss, so I mean, this is a team that's you know, won at Texas A&M to open up the conference. I mean, they're they're very talented, very well coached. They're going to play a lot of times. It's like playing against five guards. They switch one through five a lot of their uh, everything you do. So it's a it's a you know different setup, and we've got to you know prepare for that. When you talk about the fouls, how many of them, in your opinion, are as a result of the new rule change? Well, I don't think, like, you know, us moving screens, they're, they're not, uh, I mean, we had seven offensive fouls. The Q had one that was called, and, and you know, that was really a questionable one in my mind. Uh, but, uh, it, you know, on the back screen, uh, Schneider had a moving screen uh, that was called, that was legit. Xavier uh, had two, and both of them, because he's not in a screening position the way he's holding his body. I mean, you know, he's just... And that's just being out for two years. Uh, someone else had a movie uh, screen. Uh, who? Was it Kyle No, I don't think so. Uh, but it was like, really? I mean, that many? I mean, it was it's incredible. And that, and that wasn't all the offensive fouls. You know, we got, you know, post-up offensive fouls. And that was one of the new rules where you can't have your arms out. Like, that's one of the things. Like, every time Schneider does that today, I'm just going to stop. He's going to go run a sprint, and I'm going to sub him out. So every time now, it's going to be like awkward condition. Every single time you do that, you're getting punished. Uh, so hopefully he'll stop doing it because it's hurting us, and it's hurting him because he's not in the game because he's sitting on the bench. Yeah, he played, I think, 11 minutes, but he had seven points and, I think, five rebounds. So when he's in the game, he's producing. What have you seen out of him? In the last couple games yeah. in particular. So, yeah, I mean, bottom line is, you know, uh, let's stay in the game longer. You know, three of his five fouls are on offense. One's a moving screen, one's a push in the back, one's a post up with his arms out, which you can't do. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it, you know, it's not, not good. How have you seen IJ coming off the bench? How has that helped the team perform a little better? Uh, you know, I, I think that uh, IJ can handle starting or coming off the bench. I mean, and and that's sometimes it's hard for players, you know, it's harder for guys that come off the bench to be able to, you know, step right in and be effective right away. You know, he, he's experienced and smart and uh, very tough, and so he, he can handle whatever's thrown his way. I mean, he's, he's done a great job for us, and, and including with his leadership. I think I'm really, really proud of the kind of year he's had for us thus far. Tyson's minutes kind of going down in, in recent games. That mainly just because going big and things that a lot more. Yeah, and I'm, I'm actually talked with Tyson today. We need him to play more minutes. And his whole thing is it's all based on his ability to defend and, and do a great job defensively. I have no questions about him offensively. We need his offense. And this is a game coming up because there's a smaller playing, smaller team. Where I'm, I'm counting him being able to play more minutes than he's played in the last couple of games. When you're teaching, you know, those freshman guards like a Tyson, what, what, where do they struggle with most on the defensive end? Well, you know, for him uh, in particular, the biggest thing for him is just getting bigger and stronger. I mean, he came in at 150 pounds, and now he's playing at about 164. And, you know, actually, you know, I project that a year from right now, he'll be, you know, 178, 180, you know, and it's going to take a lot of work on his part. But a lot of it's just that, you know, it's the, you know, freshmen get bigger and stronger, and your biggest year of improvement is between your freshman and your sophomore year. And uh, so, you know, for, for him, it's just really being super intense mentally. He's very smart, very cerebral.
coach's son, understands the game, great feel for it. He can do more for us off the ball. Uh, but like, you know, just the, the physical ability to just lock and trail without separation with a guy who's a really good athlete is something that you know, takes a lot of strength and you've got to anticipate. And, um, these are all things they're learning. And so, you know, you ask those freshmen, you know, how, how much different it is. It's a lot different the way we're playing defense versus what they did when they were, before they got here. You talked about matchup for Tennessee. What's the biggest one that you see that concerns you? Well, uh, it's just that they don't have, they don't play big at all. I mean, they're, they're, they're post, you know, they're, a lot of times they're going to play uh, a four at the five, a three at the four, and then three guards. So you're basically you're playing against five guards. And they're very aggressive. I mean, they're a good rebounding team. They block shots, you know, they're, Starting four man second in the conference and block shots in conference games in Williams. I mean, you know, they're athletic. Their little point guard from Alabama, uh, he's really, really fast and quick. Uh, I mean, they're, they're a problem. Any more questions?